What's up everyone, Dapplade here with another Hunter's Guide to Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. In this video we're going to be bringing you another endgame build, this time for the bow. Now what is an endgame build? Well it is a build that is constructed from some of the rarest armour, weapons and decorations in the game. They also feature curious crafting, but it's not to the extent where the skill augmentations are the absolute rarest of the rare. However, these are endgame builds so they do have some of them. Now as always if you find these builds or videos helpful, informative or entertaining please consider liking the video as well as subscribing to the channel as I try to bring you a variety of builds for a variety of different playstyles. Now when it comes to the bow, it's a very strong elemental weapon in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. But that being said, it is a little bit of a glass cannon, rarely being able to take many hits before you go down. However, there are ways around this with certain skills. Also, when it comes to creating builds in Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, there are some armor sets that have unique skills, shall we say. These unique, powerful skills can really give you the edge in combat. And we're going to combine four of them with this bow build. We're going to be combining Berserk, Strife, Mel of Hellfire, and Blood Awakening. But for the purpose of this build, I'm just going to simply call it the Blood Awakening build. So for this build, you'll need the Primordial Helm, Primordial Mel, Primordial Vambraces, the Sinister Grudge Tassets, and the Primordial Greaves. For your Petalace, as we are damage focused and have the Berserk skill, I'd recommend the Demon Petalace for extra DPS. And then for your Talisman, now this is where things get tricky and there's a big caveat to this build, is you need a Talisman with Berserk level 2 attached to it. This is by far the hardest aspect to achieve with this build. But if you're able to get Berserk at level 2, coupled with some decoration slots, you should be able to craft something similar to what is shown here. You may even be able to get a better build if you're lucky enough. As for your weapon, this is again an interchangeable bow build, so all you have to do is change out the weapon and the elemental decorations and you should be able to get away with using any of the elements in the game. I also like to use spread arrows, so I'm only going to be focusing on bows that have the same arrow type. For the demonstration of this video, this build is a dragon build, so it's using the Crimson Plume, which is the Valstrax bow. If you wanted to use a fire bow, I'd recommend using the Raffian bow. For thunder, I'd recommend the Kezu bow. For water, the Daimyo Hematol bow. And then for ice, the Velcana bow. As for the augmentations on these weapons, go for a Rampage Decoration slot upgrade if the bow you are using doesn't already have a tier 3 Rampage Decoration slot. Afterwards, go for increasing the bow's elemental value. So when it comes to the decorations, first of all I'd recommend going for Critical Jewels to max out Crit Boost. For your Rampage slot, I'd go for the Elemental Bane Jewel, which will increase our elemental damage against monster hit zones that are severely weak to elements. If a monster doesn't really have a elemental hit zone of 20 or above, then you can drop Elemental Bane for something else such as one of the anti-species decorations. Afterwards I've gone for a Mighty Bow Jewel to max out the Bow Charge Plus skill, Phoenix Jewels to max out Coalescence, Jumping Jewels for points in Evade Extender. This could be seen as optional to some people but it is a quality of life decoration I'd strongly recommend. You'll then have Charge Jewels to max out Charge Master, Critical Element Jewel for some points in Critical Element, Element Exploit Jewel for some points in Element Exploit, Tenderizer Jewels to max out Weakness Exploit, Dragon Jewels to max out Dragon Attack. Remember, if you're using a different bow, which has a different element, you would replace these Dragon Jewels to match whatever new element you are using. So say you're using a Thunder Bow, you'll have Bolt Jewels instead. You'll then have Spread Jewels to max out the Spread Up skill. You can replace these Spread Jewels if you wanted to, if you wanted to use a different arrow type. So if you wanted to use piercing arrows, you could replace spread jewels with piercing jewels instead. And then finally, I've gone for a bloodless jewel for a point in the bloodless skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build that has fluctuating stats. This all depends on what scroll you are in. By default, when you're in the red scroll, you'll have a raw attack of around 405 with a dragon rating of 102. You have 10% base affinity, which can potentially be 60% when you take into account weakness exploit. And you'll have a weaker defense of 800 and 63 that is strong against water and thunder but slightly weak to the other elements especially dragon however once you're in the blue scroll and certain buffs have been applied to your hunter you'll potentially have a raw attack of 378 with a dragon rating of 125 you'll have 40 percent base affinity which can be 90 percent when you take into account weakness exploit and you'll have a strong defense of 963 that is exceedingly weak to every single element in the game but that doesn't matter when we take into account the Berserk skill, which we'll talk about when we get to the skill section. As for the switch skills, they're down to personal preference, however I would recommend taking Dodge Bolt to allow us to potentially counter monster attacks. But let's move on to the next section where we talk about the skills for this build. Now first of all you have Dragon Attack at level 5. Dragon Attack is a skill that increases the Dragon Rating and thus the Dragon Damage of this build. However, if you were using a different weapon with a different element, you would replace the Dragon Attack to match whatever new element you are using. So, like I said, if you were using a Thunder Bow, 
you would have Thunder Attack at level 5 instead. You'll then have Critical Boost at level 3, increasing the damage of our attacks whenever they crit a monster, but only applies to the raw portion of an attack, not the elemental portion. You'll then have Weakness Exploit at level 3, which increases our affinity by up to 50% at level 3 whenever we're attacking monster weak points. Now some people may want to take Maximum Might over Weakness Exploit, but the reason we're taking Weakness Exploit is because of Blood Awakening and some of the other skills which we'll talk about in a moment. You'll then have Spread Up at level 3, increasing the damage of Spread Arrows. Like I said, if you wanted to replace the Spread Jewels with Piercing Jewels, Spread Up will be replaced by Pierce Up or Normal Up, increasing the damage of those arrow types instead. You then have Part Breaker at level 3, which is a skill found on the armor. Part Breaker is a skill that allows us to break monster body parts more easily, which we've taken mainly in unison with two skills, Blood Rite and Blood Awakening, which we'll get to soon. And speaking of which, next up is Blood Rite at level 3, a skill that when we're damaging a monster body part that has been broken, a portion of the damage is used to heal our hunter, giving us extra survivability, and in the case of this build, also benefits Blood Awakening and the Berserk skill. Next up is Mel Hellfire at level 3, a very risky skill, a glass cannon of a skill in all honesty, as whenever we're using a red scroll, it will decrease our defense, but increase our raw attack, and when using a blue scroll, it will increase our elemental attack, but reduce our elemental resistances. Mel Hellfire is useful though, especially when used in unison with Berserk. Anyway, next up is Coalescence at level 3, a skill that when we remove a blight or harmful element from our hunter, in the case of this build, it would be Bloodlust. We gain increased raw attack, elemental attack, and ailment if we were using an ailment weapon. You'll then have Charge Master at level 3, increasing the elemental damage of charged attacks. And this does apply to the bow charged attacks. And next up is Blood Awakening, the namesake of this build. This is a skill, a buff that is applied to our hunters. For during a certain amount of time, when we regain health when landing attacks on a monster, either through the Blood Rite skill, or the Blood Blight debuff, will gain a bonus to our raw attack and elemental attack. There is a dedicated video elsewhere on the channel if you want more information about how much bonuses you get with this skill, but long story short, this basically increases our overall attack and works well when coupled with Blood Right and Part Breaker. Anyway, next up is Strife at level 3. Again, another one of the key skills for this build. Strife is a skill that increases our elemental attack and affinity in proportion to the length of red health on our health bar. And this coupled with Berserk means that we should get the full benefits of this most of the time. On top of that, Strife at level 3, when our red health is 60% or more, will gain infinite stamina. This we should be able to maintain for longer periods when coupled with Blood Rite. Anyway, next up is Critical Element at level 2. It would have been nice to get this higher, but Critical Element is a skill that increases the damage of our attacks whenever they crit a monster, but applies to the elemental portion of an attack, not the raw attack portion. You'll then have Evade Extender at level 2, a quality of life skill I strongly recommend for most bow builds, well, to be honest, any build in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, as it increases the distance at which we dodge and evade. You'll then have Element Exploit at level 2, a skill which would have been nice to get higher again, but this increases our elemental damage when we're attacking monster body parts that are severely weak to elements. So once a monster body part has an elemental weakness rating of 25 or above. Anyway, then you have Berserk at level 2, one of the other key skills for this build. Again, there is a dedicated video on the channel elsewhere about Berserk if you want more information, but Too Long Didn't Read is a skill that when you switch to a blue scroll, that's activating Melv Hellfire, and increasing our elemental damage, our entire health bar will turn red, thus gaining the effects of strife as well. However, this means our health will slowly start to drain and tick down over time. This health drain is also increased should we take hits whilst our health is red. But, whilst our health is red, we also cannot faint, at least not from monster attacks. We can faint from the health drain, yes, but not from being hit by a monster greatly increasing the survivability of the bow overall. Yes, it means that you have to manage your health a little bit more than normal, but to be honest, the pros for this far outweigh the cons. So as you can see, activating Berserk activates Mel Hellfire. You'll then get all the bonuses of Strife. Berserk will also mean that our health starts ticking down, but thanks to Partbreak and Bloodbright, we should be able to replenish it quite often during a hunt, reducing the need to actually manually heal ourselves, which in turn will potentially trigger Blood Awakening increasing our damage even more. So those are the main sort of key skills for this build, but you do have a few other essential ones and non-essential byproducts. For example, Paralysis Attack, this was a byproduct of the Talisman, you'll probably not have this. You'll then have Bow Charge Plus at level 1, an essential skill for the bow that increases the bow maximum charge level by 1, allowing us to use pretty much all the arrow levels for the bows. 
You'll then have muck resistance at level 1, reducing the impairment to mobility when stuck in the mud or deep snow. Again, not really needed. You then have Bloodlust at level 1, which is kind of needed. Bloodlust is a skill that gives us a modified version of the Frenzy Virus, a purple bar that fills up above our health bar. Whilst it's filling up, we'll suffer with a small health drain, which can be nasty when combined with the Berserk health drain, but it is still manageable, especially at level 1. But in return, we'll gain increased raw attack, evasion capabilities, and reduced stamina usage. But we can overcome the effects of the Frenzy Virus or manage them. You can even manage them by taking null berries to reduce the bar or deal enough damage to a monster after which you will overcome it, giving us a nice boost to our base affinity. And on top of that, it means that we trigger Coalescence, getting even more damage bonuses. However, should you fail to fight off the effects of the Frenzy Virus and that purple bar fill up, then you'll be debuffed and fully affected by the Frenzy Virus to which your natural health regeneration will disappear and you'll take increased damage from monsters. Again, there is a dedicated video if you want more information on how the Frenzy Virus works elsewhere on the channel. And then finally you have Burst at level 1, which is a skill that when continuously landing attacks on a monster it will gradually increase the raw attack damage and elemental damage of our build. It would have been nice to get this higher, but unfortunately we were running out of decoration slots, but just getting it at level 1 is a nice bonus. And so those are all the skills to this build. Now, unfortunately, this build is lacking in some quality of life skills that I normally recommend. For example, Intrepid Heart is missing, Spirit Bird Cool is missing. I will also say as well, this build is missing two potential DPS skills, that being Blade Scale Hone, which when dodging an attack at the right time can increase the damage of our close range coatings. And if you're using a Fire, Water or Ice Bows, it's also missing the Iron Clad or Flame Scale decorations to increase the elemental ratings of those weapons respectively. But like I said, we are limited in our decoration slots and overall skills, unfortunately. But let's move on to the next section where we talk about the curious crafting. Now, these are endgame builds, so they will feature curious crafting. Also, these are the absolute endgame builds as well, so they will have some of the rarest skills on them. So, for the Primordial Helm, I've got a point in Melv Hellfire. For the Primordial Mel, again, I've got a point in Melv Hellfire and a point in the Muck Resistance skill. For the Primordial Van Braces, I've got a point in the Strife skill. For the Sinister Grudge Tacits, I've got another point in the Strife skill. And then for the Primordial Greaves, I've got again another point in the Strife skill. So there's only two skills that I've really got through Curious Crafting, which is Strife and Melv Hellfire. But of course, every build out there, even these absolute endgame builds, come with various pros and cons. No build is absolutely perfect. When it comes to the Blood Awakening bow build, its biggest pro is its damage output. Able to bring down monsters exceedingly quickly, so long as you're countering them with the correct elements. On top of that, the next pro for this build is how the skills synergize well with one another. As we talked before in the skill section, Berserk coupled with Male Hellfire, Strife, Partbreaker, Blood Rite, and Blood Awakening, these all synergize really well with one another, reducing the cons of the individual skills slightly, whilst also increasing our overall damage. And then the final pro for this build is it's an interchangeable elemental build, so it can get away with using any element in the game with minimal changes to the build. But of course there are cons. The biggest con for this build is, again, the health drain aspects of the build. Berserk coupled with Bloodlust means we do get a health drain, which isn't the worst, especially when we take into account Blood Bright. It's still an issue. You can, of course, counter these health drains, especially the Berserk one, by either switching between the blue and red scrolls to reset the health drain, or using other items such as immunizers or special dango skills like Super Recovery. And the other con for this build is, unfortunately, it needs a talisman with Berserk at level 2 on it. Otherwise, you can make a similar build using the Chaos of Gormagala armor if you so wished, but it would have less points in the Blood Awakening skill, which can only be found on the Primordial armor set. But regardless of the cons, this is still a very powerful bow build. So long as you're able to break a monster body part quite quickly and you're countering them with the correct elements, you'll be able to bring down monsters very quickly with some very big damage numbers. Yes, it's annoying that this build lacks a little bit in terms of quality of life, and it could potentially be made even stronger with certain skills, but unfortunately at the time of this video, I cannot fit any more decorations or skills onto the build, but you may have better luck with your talisman. Regardless though, like I said, this is one of the strongest bow builds out there and can take on any content that Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak throws at you. But what are your thoughts? Please leave a comment down below, and until next time, I've been Darblade, bringing you another endgame build, this time for the bow in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.